Welcome. My name is Jamie Weinbrink. I'm Dean of the College of Liberal Arts here at RIT, and welcome to RIT for this inaugural talk uh, to the RIT Immigration Policy Speaker Series. Uh, we have a really special guest today. We also have to go through about three or four introductions before we get to our special guest, so I'm going to be very quick. I want to thank the interpreters, uh, Julie and Nicole, for your services tonight. Thank you. And I also want to thank a few of the coordinators uh, of this event. It's taken a lot of effort to pull on, to pull off not just this event, but the whole speaker series. Uh, Dr. Andrea Hickerson, Dr. Ron Hira, Helen Adamson, uh, Debbie Steen, and Heather Knappen have all been uh, really working hard to, to pull this event together. Um, I will pass the, the baton, I guess, over to Andrea. Thank you all. As the Dean said, this is the inaugural lecture in our Immigration Policy Speaker Series. Um, the idea behind this series, series is to just create a larger conversation about immigration. Um, so far, a lot of that conversation has been confined to border states and gateway cities, and we're looking to bring this discussion to Rochester. Um, throughout the academic year, we hope to have six to eight speakers from various occupations. Um, we so far have three speakers lined up. Again, our first is tonight, so you know about that one. Um, the second speaker we have will be Jeffrey Kay, who is an immigration commentator for PBS and the author of the book Moving Millions, How Coyote Capitalism Fuels Global Immigration. That's on November 8th. There were handouts in the back if you want more information on that. And our third speaker will be on November 30th. It's Kirk Semple. Kirk Semple is an immigration reporter for the New York Times. He also has an ongoing series um, called Newly Now Arriving Mexican Immigrants in New York City. Um, the series wouldn't have been possible without a long list of sponsors, both um, external and internal in the college. Um, special thanks to the Department of Communication, the Department of STS Public Policy, Urban and Community Studies Program, and the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. Um, we're very honored as well to have the support of some community organizations, the Rochester and Genesee Valley Area Labor Federation, and the AFL-CIO. And finally, the Rochester section of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. And to say a few words on their behalf, I'd like to introduce to you um, the section vice chair, Bill Folks. Thank you, and uh, I just want to say, um, uh, I'm representing the, uh, the Rochester section, but the, the IEEE is a worldwide, is, is the largest worldwide professional organization dedicated to the advancement of technology with over 300,000 professionals, engineers, scientists worldwide. Immigration is a very passionate addition for us as a result. So we were, we were very excited when we were contacted by Ron with an opportunity to, uh, to help sponsor this event. Thank you. Great, thank you. And I'd like to pass the microphone off to my co-organizer, Ron Hero, who will introduce tonight's speaker. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Dean Weinbrink. Uh, before we get to the actual introduction, what I'd like to do is just tell you a little bit about the protocol for tonight. Uh, Dr. Marshall will speak for about 40 minutes or so, and then we'll open up the, uh, the microphones for question and answer period. There are two microphones set up here on either side. If you could line up uh, with your questions uh, and speak into the microphone because we are videotaping this and we'd like to capture everything uh, for the folks who cannot be here tonight. So um, it's my privilege today to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Ray Marshall. Dr. Marshall uh, possesses a rare perspective. He's one of the country's most important academic labor economists. Uh, but he's also been a policymaker. Immigration is one of those policy issues that's especially difficult to confront due to several factors. First, there are multiple competing interests, often very passionate interests, I might add. Second, the expected impacts of policy changes are often in dispute. Lastly, the government has virtually no analytical capabilities to help policymakers evaluate immigration policy choices. We need the kind of expertise that Dr. Marshall holds to help us break through the current stalemate on U.S. immigration policy. Dr. Ray Marshall currently holds the Audre and Bernard Rappaport Centennial Chair in Economics and Public Affairs at the University of Texas 
Austin, where he has spent most of his career. He served as the nation's 16th Secretary of Labor under President Jimmy Carter. He holds a PhD in economics from the University of California, Berkeley, and honorary degrees from eight different universities. Dr. Marshall has held positions in a number of organizations, too many to go through tonight, uh, but I'll mention just a few. The New Commission on the Skills of the American Economy, he served as the national president of the Industrial Relations Research Association. He, served as chair, he serves as chairman of the board of the National Center on Education and the Economy, and I learned today was actually uh, located here in Rochester for many years. Uh, and he's also a member of the board of the Economic Policy Institute, an organization which he co-founded. Dr. Marshall has served on a number of task forces and commissions concerned with labor and economic policy. Again, just highlighting a few, the Clinton Administration's Commission on the Future of Worker and Management Relations, the Council on Foreign Relations Task Force on the International Financial Architecture, and he served as chair of the Carnegie Corporations of New York's Action Council on Minority Education. Dr. Marshall has also served on the boards and audit committees, committees of a number of corporations and foundations, and I won't go through the whole list, so I can assure you it's quite long. Uh, Dr. Marshall is an active and prolific author. He has written over 30 books and monographs and approximately 200 articles and chapters. Two of his recent books are the basis of today's lecture. One, in, one called Immigration for Shared Prosperity, a Framework for, Com for Comprehensive Reform, was endorsed by both major labor union organizations, the AFL-CIO and Change Today. The second book, which compares the immigration policies of other developed countries, is due to be released at the end of this month. It's called Value Added Immigration, Lessons for the United States from Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom. Both books are published by the Economic Policy Institute. Without further ado, I present Dr. Ray Marshall. Ray, welcome to Rochester and Austin. Which was not 
Hollywood law. Uh, most of us who were involved in developing the factual and analytical basis for it uh, understood that it uh, could not be enforced, uh, that it was not transparent, it was not fair, and was sensible. And that all turned out to be exactly the way it was. And Alan Simpson, who was part of that bill, uh, said that himself uh, after it had been passed. It also shows you how hard it is to get uh, such legislation passed. Uh, then when uh, Senators Kennedy and McCain with, with uh, President Bush tried to reform, uh, have comprehensive immigration reform in, uh, after 2006 uh, and failed uh, to get it done, I wrote a piece called Getting Immigration Reform Right. And that led to about two years of very hard work. Uh, because after I wrote it, uh, Senator Kennedy and John Sweeney, who was then president of the AFL-CIO, said that if you can organize uh, support for the framework that you have outlined for uh, comprehensive immigration reform, we can get it back. Uh, and I had worked some with Senator Obama, who wanted to pass a comprehensive immigration reform bill as well as uh, Senator Kennedy. So I, was, I, I got involved two years ago uh, going all over the country uh, building support for uh, comprehensive immigration reform uh, and uh, been reasonably successful to get support for the framework. But if for reasons that I'll point out later, I'm less optimistic now that we will actually get it done than I was when I started. But I'm kind of a pathological optimist, so I keep thinking <laughs> away at it. And I think uh, we, that after the election, uh, we've got a pretty good chance to get it done. It is an extremely important problem. Uh, we said that in 1977-78, uh, when we started trying to reform the system. Everybody agrees that it's broke. Uh, but uh, nobody has been able to fix it, and everybody also agrees that the longer we let it fester, the more trouble it will cause and the harder it will be to fix. Now, the reason that is so tragic is that immigration has made and will continue to make very important contributions to the country. We're a nation of immigrants, and it's not a question of whether we'll have immigrants. It's under what conditions and uh, how immigration will be managed. And therefore, that's where I am now, uh, trying to uh, build uh, support for comprehensive immigration reform. Let me start with some definitions. Uh, I've called this talk sensible immigration reform. And by sensible, I mean two things. One is that it's fact-based and research-based. And it's sensible when you consider immigration to be an all, uh, the best alternative for overcoming a labor shortage. And it's very important to apply that test because if you don't do that, 